Knowing about the diminished scale guitar shapes on the fretboard is all well and good. Even practicing your diminished scales up and down is great. That's important stuff to practice. But how are we going to apply something as strange as the diminished scale in our actual playing, in our improvisations over progressions, over tunes in real music? Well, in this lesson, I am going to show you a diminished scale guitar trick for improvising with the diminished scale over a 12 bar jazz blues progression compared to how difficult it seems like it would be to start improvising with this bizarre scale type uh, this approach is really fun it's easy it's simple it's kind of like a soloing etude that we're going to do so if improvising with the diminished scale is one of your guitar goals if you want your playing to sound a little more weird a little more out a little less vanilla over a jazz blues progression then i think you're going to like this I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com, where I have courses that help guitarists express themselves more freely and confidently through musicianship skills like improvisation, fretboard theory, mastery, arranging, and much more. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new lesson videos every week. Okay, here's what we're going to cover. We have a lot to get into. We're going to go over the jazz blues progression quickly just so we know what chords we're playing. We're going to talk about the scales those chords come from. So those would be the typical scales you'd play over those chords. We're going to talk about how and why a diminished arpeggio works over a dominant seventh chord. We'll start with the arpeggio. We'll drill some of that and do some improvising with that. Then we're going to add the scale to it, talk about the diminished scale and how to play it. Just in a specific place on the guitar, it's going to be very manageable, very doable. Uh, then we are going to just lead up to our kind of etude and drills with that to improvise over the whole progression with diminished scale. You'll see it's actually quite uh, straightforward what we're going to do. And at the end, I have a little bonus tip on uh, a, a takeaway that we can use to apply what we're talking about here in other ways. That's really cool. So I'll give you that bonus tip at the end. If you want diagrams of the diminished scale so you can follow along and work on this, you can get it inside my free PDF download of scales called the Printable Parent Scales PDF. It has a bunch of scales and all the diagrams you need on the guitar and diminished scale is in there. You can get that with the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Let's dive into the first part of the exercises. Let's quickly go over the jazz blues progression. It's different than the typical 12 bar blues uh in actual blues music or rock and roll there's a, a few more changes and this is one of the most simple versions of the jazz blues there can be even more chord changes within it but it is still a version of the 12 bar blues we're going to start with the dominant seventh chord in this case we'll be in b flat uh the key of b flat even though it's dominant seven we'll call it the key of b flat the second chord is the four chord and then it goes back to b flat for two measures then it goes back to the four chord dominant seven e flat dominant seven and then back to b flat i'd recommend working on these with shell voicings to get it down you can check out a video uh, all about shell voicings there's a link in the description if you need to get those down c minor seven uh is very much a jazz blues addition to the blues progression that's preceding f7 as a 2-5 and then back to b flat so again this is a very simple version a great one to work on for this diminished scale thing this diminished scale stuff will work on any version of the blues though you can just treat it like we're gonna do here so you might want to play practice playing through the progression like this one, two three four four chord e flat down to seven and then b flat just to get the chords down and hear it if you're not doing that yet okay let's move on to the next part obviously we're going to do the diminished scale over these but the scales these come from are just major scales each of these dominant seventh chords they are the five chord of a key so if you call this five and find one this is b flat five six seven one ah the scale it comes from is e flat major so if you play an e flat major scale over that chord it's the scale that the chord comes from and it'll sound right Alternatively, people sometimes will call the scale the mixolydian scale. It's the same thing. It just means that collection of notes, the E flat scale, but B flat is the root. It's the fifth mode of the major scale, mixolydian. That is how I think of it over a dominant seventh chords. I'll think of this as the root. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, seven, one. So with all of these, that is the case. This is the five of A flat major, or you can call it E flat mixolydian. And then these two are just the two and the five chord of the B flat major scale. So a bunch of major scales here. E flat major scale, A flat major scale, B flat major scale, and those are the scales the chords actually come from. So one could improvise through this with those or with chord tones, which I talk about a lot on my channel. That is going to sound really straightforward, really vanilla, as some people will call it. And that's why we're trying to get some weirdness into our playing by playing around with the diminished scale. Let's move on to the next step. 
So let's look at why and how the diminished sound works so well with dominant seventh chords. It's quite simple. Here's where we're going to be working. We're going to be working with the top three strings and the top four strings with this whole kind of exercise series. This is the root of B flat right here. Okay, here is the arpeggio shape in this position here. Root of B flat, flat seven of B flat seven, the five and the three. These notes, get these down. Those are just chord tones of B flat dominant seven. Okay. Let's go to E flat dominant seven. And I'm gonna show you how the diminished chord makes it easier than that. Okay, so we have those, we're gonna kind of review those. Back to this B flat dominant seven. Here's how we can make a dominant seventh chord diminished. Take the root and bring it up a half step. Okay, that could be considered the flat nine of the chord. You don't need to worry about much of the theory here if you don't want to, but that could be considered the flat nine of the chord. And now we have flat nine, flat seven, five, three. Oh, and we have this symmetrical shape, which means every note is a distance of a minor third from the, from the other note above and below. Here's a minor third up, a minor third up, a minor third up, and it works that way forever. Okay, so the diminished seven arpeggio it's all minor thirds, and it's one note, one half step different than a dominant seven arpeggio, okay? Don't worry about thinking too hard about that. I'm just setting us up. I could just start and say, hey, play this over B flat, but I want you to see, oh, chord tone, chord tone, chord tone of B flat dominant seven and flat nine. Okay, the flat nine is the thing that is making it diminished, and we're just ignoring. So really, we're thinking of this as B flat dominant seven, flat nine, without the root. That's how we're thinking of it, okay? Here is the mind-blowing part and why this is so freaking cool. Because this is symmetrical, anywhere you move this, if I move it down three frets, you have the same notes in a different order. Move it up three frets. We're gonna use that later in the lesson. Okay, well, here's one other way to think of it and you can see how cool it is across the changes. I often think of it as the diminished shape off of a certain chord tone. So that's the third of B flat. So I'm playing, oh, diminished shape, kind of call it off of. I'm just playing that first and playing that shape, the third of B flat. Oh, okay. Well, here's the fifth of B flat. B flat is here, the root. B flat is here, the root. One, two, three, four, five, fifth. Ah, the same shape can be played off the fifth. Okay, here's the flat seven of B flat. One, three, five, seven. Same shape can be played off the seven. So now I'm kind of tracking around chord tones, off of chord tones of the chord. You, you don't need to go up the fretboard like that. I'm just pointing that principle out because the next chord is E flat dominant seven. And the flat seven of E flat dominant seven is here. And we can play that diminished shape a half step below where we just were. B flat dominant seven flat nine, diminished arpeggio over B flat seven. Ah, diminished arpeggio over E flat seven. We have these notes. We're ignoring this one for now that we played earlier. Okay, so we have an arpeggio shape off the third of B flat dominant seven. We have an arpeggio shape for the diminished arpeggio over E flat dominant seven off the flat seven of it. And if you don't want to think about any of that, just say, okay, this shape, same shape, half step down over E flat. Okay, well, we have C minor seven and F seven of the progression. Well, to play diminished over F seven, here's the flat seven of F seven, and we play the same shape a half step up, half step up from where we started. So now we have all the chords we need. We're gonna not worry about the C minor. We're just gonna treat, pretend the C minor is just F seven the whole time, that's fine. So now we have, for our progression, we have chord tones that's the same shape, all half steps apart. We have B flat seven. There's our uh, diminished over it. We have E flat seven. Here's our diminished over it. And we have F seven and including during the C minor, our diminished over it. So practice those. Okay, now we're gonna add two notes to it on the string below just to kind of fill out more options, okay? For every shape, the shape is the same. All the time we're gonna add these two notes. So now we have this shape. And half step below. That works over E flat, half step back up. This works over B flat seven. And half step up, this works over C minor seven and F seven. Pretty cool, right? 
So drill those and make sure you get them down. And then we want to play them in time over the progression. Let's give it a try. Don't worry about how it sounds. We're drilling here. Um, and you can find ways to make it sound cool as you get better at it. Just try to play the right shape at the right time. Okay, make sure you can do that through the progression in time, any tempo, and that's gonna be a, a very important step. Then we're gonna start adding the scale to it. Okay, ready to add the scale to it? It's very straightforward. Also, every chord tone of the diminished arpeggio shape that we worked out, we're gonna add a note that's a half step below it. Almost everyone within the same position. So any of these, half step below. Oh, you can also think of it as a whole step above. Okay, so every chord tone note has a half step below and a whole step above. A whole step above. That's because the diminished scale is just whole step, then half step, then whole step, then half step, then whole step forever. One of the most popular videos on my whole channel is the diminished scale video. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's a super, super thorough all about the diminished scale. This is more just application, how to use it on the blues. So we're just learning this one little shape of it. But if you want to know more, check out that other video, link in the description. So when we do that and we stay in one position, here's the shape we get. And you can just think of it as this very straightforward. Start on this note and it's finger one and then finger three and finger four. Next string, finger one, finger two, finger four. And then that repeats, finger one, three, four, one, two, four. Oh, awesome. Fingers one, three, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, four. Very reasonable kind of guitar shape there. So your homework at this stage is to drill those shapes in the three spots. So we gotta move the whole thing half step down and say, this is the one that works over E flat. I'm kind of seeing the root of E flat here, and I'm seeing this as the third of that chord, and I'm playing that scale shape off of it. Just kind of a visual thing for the fretboard and how I see it. Okay, this is off of the flat seven of B flat seven. You don't need to think of it that way, that's just sharing how I do. And then half step up, this is F seven. Here's the third note of F seven. I'm playing that scale shape off of it. Fingers one, three, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, four. Make sure you can play those up and down in those three spots and kind of navigate that. Then we're ready to use it in the music. Okay, playing with the scale in time with the progression is now the etude. This is the exercise. Don't worry about it sounding exactly how you want to sound yet. This is just a drill. Try to play the right scale shape at the right time over the right chord. And I'll talk a little bit more after we do this demonstration on um, how to approach using it at the right times for yourself. Uh, let's just hear what it sounds like. Just try to play with it in time, everything moves by half step. Whatever it sounds like to you, just write notes at the right time. That's the etude. Let's go on to one kind of more uh, fun, advanced topic here that takes it to the next level. So maybe you already realize this, but now that we know that the shapes are symmetrical, so they're the same everywhere on the guitar, and all we have to move is half step either direction to cover the different chords in the progression, you can do it anywhere on the guitar really easily without having to learn new shapes or whatever. So if you go down a minor third, uh, three frets of this shape, well, then you're just here and you can go down a half step for the E flat chord, up a half step for the F7 chord, or if you're up in this position or anywhere else. So it can be fun to try to travel with it. If you're doing the arpeggio version, for example, travel with it in this way where you slide and then play the shape, slide, play the shape, and then just move by half step. Very cool kind of more advanced version of the etude improvisation uh, kind of exercise here.
Whoops. So again, I'm just kind of doing it as an exercise. You can add the scale notes to that, but that alone might be helpful in these little things in your playing. And I'll share kind of my ideas about that in one sec. If you want to get the diagrams of the diminished scale to work with anywhere on the guitar, you can get them for free. They're inside my printable parent scales PDF pack. There's a bunch of scales in there, including the diminished scale. You can get that for free with the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Now here's my final tip, the bonus tip here. And this is because a drill like this, an exercise like this, we're working on exclusively a certain skill, a certain, you know, mapping something out, hearing it, doing something weird, doing something different. So most of what we're playing when we first work on something like this is not going to sound maybe like we're hearing in our head or like what we want it to sound like, but little pieces of it will. So when drilling something like this, I think of it as this exclusive, like you might be doing just all layup drills or something in basketball, but obviously that's not the game, right? That's not the full game. You're just trying to master that layup. So in the game, you run, do a layup, funny, I don't play basketball at all, but sports analogies work sometimes. So we just want to not worry about, keep our, keep our eye on the ball to keep the sports thing going. Keep our eye on the ball in terms of this skill is what I'm getting down. This weirdness that it sounds like right now, maybe isn't as melodic as I want it to be, but it will be awesome when I take that little bit of the weirdness and use it inside of the playing that I usually do, right? Something fresh, something different, a little moment, a little lick, a little run uh, to get outside of how we usually sound. So we're working on something in this all kind of condensed, focused, potent version. And then we want to get it so down. I believe in working on it so exclusively like that to get it down. So then it's free in our playing. So when you're playing just with the maybe blues scale and the mixolydian scale, And then a moment of running the, the diminished scale, if we only work on trying to fit it in certain places and don't get it down exclusively through the whole progression like that, in my experience, that's when we start to formulate certain licks and when, then we just only use it in a certain note order and as a certain lick. So the main point here that I'm giving is that we're okay with it not sounding like we want to sound when we're working on something so exclusively like this etude. It should just be fun, kind of a challenge. And then by doing it all over the place, if you can just jam on the whole progression that way, even if it sounds weird to you and just comfortably do that, well, then you'll, you should be at a place where it can come into your playing anywhere you are in the progression in your normal playing. So that's something to think about with everything we practice, not just this, focus on the isolated version of it get it actually comfortable, and then we can use a little uh, pepper it in to our other playing. I post a new lesson video every single week. Next week, I will have a lesson on the tune So What by Miles Davis, just straight up teaching the tune, how to play the melody, how to play the chords in the iconic way that they sound. Should be a simple, fun lesson, great for beginners or great for anyone who wants to learn that song. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.